The Sacrament of Confession, Minecraft style. The devil will do anything to keep you from going to confession. He wants us to be condemned along with him. You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, 41. Skeleton, get out of my way! I don't want to escape this place. In Jude 1, 9, we read how St. Michael the Archangel prays, The Lord rebuke you. And indeed, the Lord did rebuke him. But Jesus says, I watch Satan fall from heaven. up in one of those cells. The great dragon Satan is looking for someone to devour. Resist him solid in your faith. Revelation 12, 9, verse 8, 5, 8. Skeleton, get out of my way! I want to leave the sin and condemnation behind. Confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Proverbs 28.13 The priest seeks the lost sheep that awaits the prodigal son, the sign instrument of God's merciful love. Catechism 1465. Awesome. Divine mercy, Jesus, I trust. It's important when we're getting ready for confession to do an examination of conscience. And one way is to look at the seven capital vices and their opposing virtues. And the goal is to move from vice to virtue. God is stern in dealing with the arrogant, but to the humble he shows kindness. Pride is the root of every sin. Thanks be to God for the example of the perfect disciple, Mary. She said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Contrition is deep sorrow for sin. It is accompanied by a firm purpose of amendment and desire to avoid occasions of sins. Do not serve God in my All who believe were together and have all things in common. diamond mining. For zombies, they only have iron. In fact, they're green with envy.
A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Proverbs 14.30 Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. A mild answer calms wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15.1 Be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Matthew 5.28 What God has joined together, let no one separate. Mark 10.9 Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, Philippians 3.19. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. Self-control is another way of saying temperance. The one time Jesus refers to someone as wicked, he says, you wicked, lazy servants. Sloth is such an enemy of the soul. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. Proverbs 13.4 Confess every day to Jesus in private prayer. Confess especially mortal sins at least once a year to Jesus through a priest. Jesus, the one mediator sent by the Father, solemnly declared to his apostles, As the Father sent me, so I send you. Only God can forgive sins but he can choose who he wants as instruments or ambassadors of reconciliation. It is a lie of the devil to say that all sins have already been forgiven, for Jesus taught us to pray, Father, forgive us. The Bible and history teach us that God can forgive sins through priests in the Old and New Testaments. Let us go back in time and see. About the 6th century BC or earlier, in Leviticus 5.5, when you realize your guilt, you shall confess the sin, and the priest shall make atonement on your behalf. About 30 AD, we see John the Baptist. They were baptized by him in the River Jordan, confessing their sins. John says, bear worthy fruit of repentance. The Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. To the paralytic, stand up. The crowds glorify God for giving such authority to men. Matthew 9.6 Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. This son of mine was lost and is found. Luke 15 is awesome. About 70 AD in the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 10, verse 9, God has given authority to forgive sins to men. Matthew uses the plural because he's writing in the context of a church where apostles forgive sins. Compare John 20, 23. About 90 AD, John 20, 23, whose sins you forgive or hold bound. The choice depends on hearing sins confessed. If they're repentant, they are loosed. If they are not repentant, they are held bound. St. Paul writes, God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are ambassadors for Christ, entreating you to be reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians 5.18 Believers confess their sins to the apostles in Acts 19. About 74 AD, in the letter of Barnabas, we read, Confess your sins. Do not go to prayer with an evil conscience. A 
Ignatius of Antioch in 110 AD writes, Many in communion with the bishop in the exercise of confession return to the unity of the church. Irenaeus in 189 AD urges confession in church, lest they withdraw themselves from the hope of the life of God. In 203 AD, Tertullian corrects those who refuse to confess, warning that they will perish along with their shame. In 215 AD, Hippolytus, in context of the ordination of a bishop, prays, Grant this new bishop the power and grace to forgive sins in accord with your command. Referring to John 20:23, the history of the church, John 20:23 20, is always referred to confession. Origin, 2:48 A.D. Do not be ashamed to confess your sins to a priest. Seek this medicine. Saint Cyprian of Carthage in 2:51 A.D. writes, "I beseech you, let everyone who has sinned confess his sin while he is still in this world, while the satisfaction." and remission made through priests are still pleasing before the Lord. Afrahat the Persian says in about 340 AD, writes, priests are disciples of Christ, the physician, and call to hear confession and encourage those who are ashamed to reveal their sin, but never make public what was confessed, lest the innocent may be thought of as guilty. 387 AD, St. John Chrysostom writes, Priests have received a power which God has given neither to angels nor to archangels. It was said to them, Who sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. A crown is given to penitents. 388 AD, St. Ambrose rebukes the Novationist, who professed to show reverence for the Lord by reserving to him alone the power of forgiving sins. Greater wrong could not have been done than what they do in seeking to rescind the command of Christ. The church obeys him by binding sin and by loosing it. The power to bind and loose is granted to priests only. Three eighty eight AD Saint Jerome writes If a person infected with the venom of sin keeps silence and does not confess his sins to a priest to receive absolution, the priest cannot cure him. 395 AD, St. Augustine writes, In the church, therefore, there are three ways in which sins are forgiven, in baptisms, in prayer for light sins, and in the greater humility of confession. If you excuse yourself in confession, you shut up sin within your soul and shut out pardon, St. Augustine exhorts us. Pope Innocent I, 417 AD declared that severe sinners guilty of apostasy, adultery, murder, were reconciled on the Thursday before Easter after a time of fasting, almsgiving, and being covered with ashes, kept away from the offertory prayers of the Eucharist. Pope St. Leo I in 459 AD writes, it is sufficient that guilt which people have on their consciences be made known to the priest alone in secret of confession. By this he ended public penance with its sackcloth and ashes. St. Isidore of Seville in 600 AD writes, Confession heals, confession justifies, confession grants pardon of sin. All hope consists in confession. Believe it firmly, do not doubt, do not hesitate, never despair of the mercy of God. St. Thomas Aquinas in 1265 AD writes, God alone forgives sins. So also only God baptizes, but the priest is the minister. The forgiveness of sins is the personal work of God, who forgives sins by his own power and authority. The priest is only the instrument, like a broom in the hands of a sweeper. In the life of the body, a man sometimes is sick, and unless he takes medicine, he will die. Even so, in the spiritual life, a man is sick on account of sin. For that reason, he needs medicine, so that he may be restored to health. And this grace is bestowed in the sacrament of penance. Three conditions are necessary for penance. Contrition, 
which is sorrow for sin together with the purpose of amendment, confession of sins without any omission, and satisfaction by means of good works. Another name for satisfaction is penance. St. Bridget of Sweden, 1370 AD, confession, the more often it is used and the more carefully it is made as to both lesser and greater sins, conveys the soul increasingly forward and so pleasing to God the Father. Thomas Kempis in 1460 AD, what profiteth it to put off for a long time the confession of thy sins? Cleanse thyself forthwith, spit out the poison with all speed, hasten to take the remedy, and thou shalt thyself feel better. St. John of the Cross in 1580 AD writes, Strive always to confess your sins with deep knowledge of your own wretchedness and with clarity and purity. St. Francis de Sales, 1590 A.D., writes, Go to your confessor, open your heart to him, display to him all the recesses of your soul. Take the advice he will give you with utmost humility and simplicity. In 1620, during the ongoing Bohemian Revolt, St. John Sarkander was accused of betrayal and tortured in Olomouc, prison due to his refusal to divulge what was said in confession. He's a martyr for the seal. This release shows him being tortured. He was canonized by Pope John Paul II in 1995. 1780 A.D. St. Afonsus Maria de Ligori. Before we fall into sin, the devil labors to blind us that we may not see the evil we do and the ruin we bring upon ourselves by offending God. After we commit sin, he seeks to make us dumb that through shame we may conceal our guilt in confession. St. Benedict Joseph Labre, 1780 AD, the want of proper examination, true contrition, and firm purpose of amendment is the cause of bad confessions and of the ruin of souls. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, 1815 A.D. Our Lord himself I saw in this venerable sacrament. I felt as if my chains fell, as those of St. Peter at the touch of the divine messenger. My God, what new scenes for my soul. St. John Vianney, 1850 A.D. But if it is a serious illness, if it is a dangerous wound, he must have the doctor. After the doctor come the remedies. In the same way, when we have fallen into any grievous sin, we must have recourse to the doctor, that is, the priest, and to the remedy, that is, confession. My children, we cannot comprehend the goodness of God in giving us confession. 1860 A.D., St. Joseph Cafaso, while visiting a prison full of condemned men about to hang for their crimes, grabbed hold tight to a long beard, which happened to be attached to the biggest and meanest of the criminals. The room of the malefactors had reneged, on their pledge to go to confession. St. Joseph declared he would then hang on to the beard until the man owning it fulfilled his promise. With much coaxing, the large criminal relented, and after the confession he wept uncontrollably with joy because the incredible burden of his sins was lifted from his soul. St. Leopold Mandich, 1930. During the bombing of World War II, the church and part of the friary where St. Leopold lived were demolished but Leopold's cell and confessional were left unharmed. Leopold predicted this before his death, saying, The church and the friar will be hit by the bombs, but not this little cell. Here God exercised so much mercy for people, it must remain as a monument of God's goodness. St. Mary Faustina Kovaska, 1938 AD, Jesus speaks to St. Faustina, Daughter, when you go to confession to this fountain of my mercy, know this, that I myself am waiting for you there. I am only hidden by the priest, but I myself act in your soul. Oh, how miserable are those who do not take advantage of the miracle of God's mercy and confession. They will call out in vain, but it will be too late. St. Peel of Pietra Cina, 1968. When disturbed by passions and misfortunes, may the sweet hope of his inexhaustible mercy sustain us. Let us hasten confidently to the tribunal of penance, where he awaits us at every instant with the anxiety of a father. And even though we are aware of our inability to repay him, 
Let us have no doubts about the solemn pardon pronounced over our errors. Let us place a tombstone over them, just as our Lord has done. St. John Paul II, 1984 AD, he writes, This power to forgive sin Jesus confers through the Holy Spirit upon ordinary men, themselves subject to the snare of sin, namely his apostles. Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven, whose sins you shall retain, are retained. John 20, 23. This is one of the most awe-inspiring innovations of the Gospel. He confers this power on the apostles as something which they can transmit, as the Church has understood from the beginning, to their successors, charged by the same apostles with the mission and responsibility of continuing their work as proclaimers of the Gospel and ministers of Christ's redemptive work. Pope Benedict XVI, 2008 AD, writes, Might it not be true that today we are witnessing a certain alienation from the sacrament? When one insists solely on the accusation of sins, which must nevertheless exist, and it is necessary to help the faithful to understand its importance, one risks relegating to the background what is central, that is, the personal encounter with God, the Father of goodness and mercy. It is not sin which is at the heart of the sacramental celebration, but rather God's mercy, which is infinitely greater than any guilt of ours. In 2013, Pope Francis writes, Some say, I confess to God, but it's easy. It's like confessing by email, no? God is far away. I say things and there's no face-to-face, -face, no eye-to-eye -eye contact. Others say, no, I go to confession. But they confess so many ethereal things, so many up-in-the-air things, that they don't have to be concrete. And that's the same as not doing it. Confessing our sins is not going to a psychiatrist or to a torture chamber. It's saying to the Lord, I am a sinner but saying it through the brother, because this says it concretely. I am a sinner because of this, that, and the other thing. The Ten Commandments are also an excellent way to make examination of conscience. Today, I decide to go to confession. Luke 10, 16, Jesus said, speaking to the 72, He who hears you hears me. Listen for the voice of the Good Shepherd saying to you, I absolve you. In Luke 19.8, Zacchaeus declares, Half of my possessions, Lord, I give to the poor. If I have defrauded anyone, I will pay back four times as much. Jesus doesn't say to him, Oh no, I alone pay for your sins. No, Jesus says, Today salvation has come to this house. Because Zacchaeus understands the necessity of restitution, of making amends, of doing penance. This shows that the contrition is real. We cooperate with God's grace.
confession made innocent by the blood of the Lamb. Praise be Jesus Christ.